I've got my Crossy Road Frogger micro bit OLED display game into a playable state now. So you'll notice that like before, I've got the three rows of things going across the screen. I've got a duck at the top. I've got a ghost in the middle and a rather quick tortoise scooting uh, backwards and forwards across the screen. I've now added uh, levels to the game. So it shows I'm on level zero here. I move around, a bit hard to show this, but I move around left and right using the A and B buttons. And I can now move forward if I press A and B together. And it's also got collision detection now. So if I bump into a uh, um, an object like the ghost, or I didn't quite bump into it, that was a bit far away from it. If the ghost bumps into me, it's game over. And it flashes on the screen. And I have to start again, I get a skull on the LED display and I'll start again. So I'll reset it. I'll try and do a bit better this time. So I will try and sneak through here and get to the top. I've only put two levels in this for a demo version. So there we go, I'm now on level one. And because this is a demo, I should win the game when I get to level two. So I'm gonna make a run for it, get up to the top. There we go, the screen flashes, you win. And I get a smiley face. Let's have a look at how it works. Uh, it's written in Python. I've used the uh, online Python editor for the micro bit, which has now got the ability to add modules, to add extra Python files. So I've got extra files that are part of um, the sort of core that make this work. I've, I've added some libraries. I've added some uh, extra functionality by using these uh, extra modules here that are all part of uh, a library that make the OLED display work. So these are kind of like the drivers in effect. So I've added these files manually. You can just pick and add as many files as you want. Add them to your Python project using the online editor. Um, they're all downloadable. I'll put a link uh, on the blog. So this is the, uh, the library that somebody else has written uh, to drive an OLED display from a micro bit. Have a quick look through how the code works. Um, I'm importing all of the commands that I need from the various different uh, modules and libraries that I've added to my Python project. And I've only added the Python functions that I want. Uh, and I've imported display as LED. And you'll see it just makes it a bit less confusing because we've got two displays in our project now. We've got the LED display, the normal micro bit display. We've also got the OLED display. So I decided to rename the normal LED display as LED. Um, I've got a couple of functions in here. One is to flash the display. It makes it go negative and positive, negative and positive. Uh, and you can uh, tell it how many times you want it to flash. And I've done that because there was no um, invert command that I could find in the Python driver. I managed to work out what the hex codes were that you have to send to the OLED dis display to invert and then revert uh, the colors um, on the display, the black and white. So I'm just sending those raw hex values uh, down the I2C interface using that uh, function there. Uh, I've got a function here just to move um, what are called stamps. They're a bit like sprites, I suppose. They're really crude sprites. You can make a, a graphical object on the OLED display and you can move it around using this function. Um, I've got some variables I've set up here to track where my various um, sprites are on the screen. They're X and Y coordinates. Which way they're going? Are they going left or right? One for right, minus one for left. Um, and whether I'm alive or not. I've got a Boolean variable that I'm using for that. This is the stuff that initializes everything. So it sets the game up, clears the LED, uh, puts all the icons, the ghost, the tortoise, the duck, and my little player triangle, puts them all on the screen and draws them. And then I'm using that Boolean variable. So while I'm alive, it's gonna go through this loop. It's gonna keep doing that loop. This is uh, the bit that will move uh, my ghost, keeps my ghost moving and keeps it bouncing backwards and forwards. It changes direction when it gets to each edge of the screen. Does the same for the tortoise, same for the duck. Uh, the player moves a little bit differently. So I've got some code here that checks whether I press player A, it makes it uh, pre press button A, makes it go left, minus one. If I press button B, makes it go right. If I press A and B together, it's going to change my Y coordinate. It's going to make me go up the screen. Uh, and that's what that does. And then I've got a little if statement here to check whether I've reached the top of the screen. Uh, if we have, it flashes the screen and moves me up one level. If I've reached level two here, uh, it, it means I've won. Uh, in the real game, I think I'd probably change that to level 10. Uh, and this is the bit that checks whether we've hit anything. Because if we hit anything, we lose, we lose a life. We lose the game. And... I did consider using a functionality of this Python library for the OLED display. It does let you query the display. You can test whether a pixel is black or white, which would be a fairly obvious way of checking whether you'd hit anything. But I've got so much going on in the screen and my um, objects are fairly big. They're sort of five by five pixels across. I decided instead to use this rather tortuous um, set of, of 
if statements with lots of ors going on. So what it's doing is it's just basically checking if my player is kind of near the ghost um, uh, and or rather if it's near the tortoise or if it's near the duck, like really near, like so near it must be touching, then a live goes to false. And it drops out of the main loop uh, and it flashes on the screen. Game over. One thing that I did quite like about this is the ability with this um, Python library for driving the OLED to disp display. If you import display from Microbit, it means you can create stamps on the OLED display using the Microbit's built-in graphics. So I didn't have to draw the ghost, the tortoise, the duck, or the triangle. I just used the built-in 5x5 icons that are already in MicroPython uh, uh, for use in the Microbit. So you're able to use those. So it's a really nice little touch to get graphics going really, really quickly on the micro bit. Fun little project. Um, I'm really pleased with the way that I've been able to just join the um, micro bits to the um, join the micro bit to the OLED display using just jumper wires. It means I might be able to build it into a box. Could be a nice little compact unit. I'd like to make the levels do a little bit more. It's difficult to make it speed up because it's kind of running as fast as it can already so I can only really slow it down so I might have to do something with making the um, characters making the sprites jump further across the screen rather than speeding up to make it a little bit more difficult maybe add more sprites um, maybe change them think of other ways other hazards things that can make it more difficult uh, more challenging to play as you go up the levels and also this is a great way of exploring the functionality in the browser uh, in the browser-based Python editor for adding extra Python files to your project. So this works really well. It's really super easy. You can download your finished project as a hex file, which you can just flash onto any micro bit. All the Python files will go with it. You can drag your hex file back into the Python editor as well, so you can get back at the source code from your from your hex file. Or you can just download the Python script, but that will only download the code that is, is your main program that's actually making it run, which is the main.py um, part of the program. So there we go. Uh, a really, really fun project. Very super simple, really, to connect an OLED display to the micro bit. You can have lots of fun with it. Yeah.